All right, we're back for our third match. Two more Chicagoans. Jeff Mole, who just broke the balls, and Ed Latimer, a perennial league champion here at Red Shoes. Ed is also one of seniors division at Allen Hopkins Super Billiards Expo. A very experienced player, plays a nice methodical game. Jeff Mole, retired insurance broker. Didn't do anything quickly in life. He didn't get married till he was 38, and he's held his own agency for many years. Finally sold it for cash, which makes for a nice liquid retirement. Plays a lot of pool, who's part of the year in Florida. Enjoying life, great disposition. Of course, it's frequently said of heavy set players, they have to be jolly. Can't fight and they can't run. And first shot. Looks like Ed didn't hit the ball he was aiming at. That was really a half-hearted attempt. But Jeff Mole comes to the table with half the rack open. Jeff is a graduate of Bradley University. Probably will begin with the six ball. Incidentally, we were told that during the last match, the reason Tom Karabatsis was not penalized for three consecutive fouls was that his opponent failed to warn him that he had the first two, and he had forgotten about it himself. Though that rule was announced to the players before play began, Jeff Mall opens the balls a little bit further with the six. Let's see what he chooses to open the remaining clustered balls. Has the one ball here, but it'll be hard to reach. Gonna go for the bridge. I think Jeff would like to have stopped for the eight ball there, but he's okay because he's almost straight in on the five. Can still use the four ball to break the cluster with. And the ball's well broken that time. You can see he didn't try to overpower anything. All you really have to do is get the balls separated and the cue ball in the clear. It doesn't take yucca flats to blast the ball open. Notice that once the eight ball is gone, the nine, 10, and 12 all go in the lower left-hand corner. It demonstrates the importance of opening up the corner pockets when you play this game. I'm surprised you didn't stay there for the eight that time. They play position either for the 10 or the 14 8 combination. Two rail position here. A little bit of spin. Get up there, buddy. Just barely made where he wants to go. And he can't hit the pack from here. He's going to have to send the cue, either draw the cue ball or go around the table with it. But he cannot use this ball to further separate the balls. It shows draw. See how the seven and the eight ball block the corner pockets from the 11 and the uh, 12? That's why you have to get the corner pockets open early in your sequence. Got half the rack left and he still has problems. He'll like to see problems solved before you get to halfway through the rack. He's still alive here, but now he's got another problem to solve. Just American. Yeah, you can put a slice of uh, American cheese in. 13-12 could be made if he needs it to. He's going to have to take his break shot off the table here, though. Nope. That ball spun wickedly. He missed, but that object ball appeared to have sideways spin on it, and that usually occurs when you don't hit the cue ball where you're planning to. So an 
opening run of three, five, eight ball. Jeff Hall. Might have just enough angle on this 11 ball to separate the 7 and 8. But again, we're late in the rack and problems are still being solved. 9 ball should have come off the rack, off the table much earlier than this. Latimer opens the ball. Doesn't leave himself particularly advantageously. That is another retiree, grandfather many times over. Nice man. That's a miss. So, Jeff Ball opens up with eight. Ed Latimer responds with, excuse me, Ed Latimer responds with two. Five balls left on the table, no apparent break shot here. Loosely played rack on behalf of both players. Couldn't quite sneak by the 13 there. Not sure what he had in mind there. Didn't leave himself any real shots. He had a long shot on the 12 ball, very best, even if the nine ball had gone that time. Latimer has very little here except that same long shot, or he can bank the 13 if he prefers. He may play this ball safe. No, that's what he did. Very heady play by Ed Latimer. Got a mess, you might as well leave it for the next guy. Best Jeff can do here is along that long shot on the 13. He's not even going to try it. He's going to play safety off the nine. A finely grazed hip. Probably the right response. Latimer has no ready return safety and really only the long shot on the 13 if he wants it. Looks like he's going to go for it. Good to see you. How's that for shooting from a grandfather? like he can get two rail position on the seven here and bump the eight out. I don't know how he's going to get position on the ball near the side rail, though. It looks like he's going to save that ball for his break. Or he could save one of these two balls. It looks like that's what he's going to do. Play the 12 withdraw and come back for the seven. That sounded like a miscue. Well, exactly what it was. And Jeff Mole chooses discretion. I think he has the cue ball in hand, although there's no ready break shot here. So the first rack ends 9 5.
So at this point, Jeff Mole gets cue ball in hand behind the string since the object ball is out ahead of it. There's a very, very loose break shot here if he wants to play it real hard with a lot of follow. But it's all at low probability, but it's really all he has. This will get the cue ball to the side of the stack. Whether it comes off or not is what we'll have to wait and see. Well, he went toward the center instead. Got him loose. That's that's that probably would have worked out better. The left side corner ball would have worked out better because it acts as the apex of the triangle. When going to the two top balls at the angle he chose means he has an awful lot of mass to move. I don't think there's a combination shot on this too, so he's probably just gonna pin the eight there safely. Send the cue ball back towards the middle of the table so that the mass balls hide the two ball. That's too delicate. Now that combination shot is a very real possibility. The trick to that shot, where you're going to get some distance with the cue ball, but no distance with the eight. You're not going to move the eight very much, but you're going to send the cue ball all the way down to the end rail. Is you to use a very light, loose stroke. Okay, don't squeeze the stick. Very loose. Well, not, the end of the table wouldn't have done him any good because the two ball would be exposed. But to get it higher up with balls loose and not available to the cue ball, what you say would have worked. But he choked it off. And he left a combination off either the 8 or the 15. 14 will act as a break ball. Latimer can make some hay here. Surprised to see that. He left himself the 12, he got away with it. Probably have to play position for the one. Now he's going for the center of the table, play the 10 next. He's not too straight in, he'll play position for the six or 14 balls. It appears to be more straight in than he'd like. It's going to be the 14 and then the 6. Seven ball landed in one of the stinkier places a ball can go. Can't quite make it in either corner and it won't go in the side, so we'll see how he negotiates. He can make it in the far corner, but it's not a shot any, any player's going to see. Also, he's going to have to either ma manufacture a break shot or get the one out from behind the four. May be able to draw back and bring the seven off the rail off this three ball. Well, I don't know what he wanted to accomplish with that one. Now he has to play the two. One of your classier overcuts when you don't hit the ball at all on the way in. So a foul for Mr. Latimer. And that brings his count to thirteen. Thirteen. 
15 to 10 as Jeff Bowl comes to the table. Cue ball in hand. Now with cue ball in hand, actually not a bad time to try the seven, but he's going to start with the four. I take my little nap. Yeah, I, I sum down myself. Usually between uh, 1.30 and 2.30. I'm late. Jeff is probably going to have to come up underneath this seven ball. Worst players. Yeah. Look out. Just made it. Just made it, and he landed right where he can get his stop angle for the break shot as well. All right. Looks like that rack went 8-6, so we've got a score of... Uh, looks like 15-13. Players are still adjusting to racking the balls at the wrong end of the table, but they need that space for the video feed. been adjusted 13 balls each just ball with a break shot and we barely skimmed the stack so only the corner ball came out pool players are constantly befuddled as to where that happens but it happens when you get an online hit on the first ball so that the energy is only transferred down that one line and only one ball comes out that's the correct shot to play. Normally the move here would be to come in behind the stack for either a foul or a safety, but because of the where the eight ball was left, he Ed can't do that. Probably gonna have to skim the seven and hope to leave a long shot. Maybe he'll go into the top of the stack, try and stick the cue ball there. Looks like that's what he's trying to do. Now he had room to graze the eight. And so Jeff Moll does too. Jeff's looking to see if that five, it looks like the five ball will go and does it carry him off the 12? I don't think it will. He's wise to look at it, though, because sometimes the difference between a ball that will go and a ball that won't is near infinitesimal. You know, Jeff plays the safety into the head of the stack. You've got, to be, you've got to be careful you don't leave a dead one on the corner ball here. There's not much you can do about it. If you do, it's just the, pretty much the luck of the draw. If he got away with it, that's a very good safety. Latimer will probably try to send this ball off the rail and back into the stack if he has room to do so. Can't leave it on the end rail on the side rail because the 12 ball is open.
Hernandez called from the cue ball back into the stack and played well enough that Jeff does not have the luxury of returning that shot. This will be a difficult safety. Balls are open and there's hardly any place to hide the cue ball. Just gonna try and stick the cue ball right there. Brought a ball to the rail, that's too hard. Much too hard. Seven and 13 near the lower left-hand pocket are troublesome as they lie. You need a very small window for position on the 13 ball. He would hope to come down and move those balls. Just miss them, but he's still alive. Now because he has a broader angle than he'd like on the eight ball, he can't play position for the 12 anymore. He's probably gonna try and hit the 12 coming off the eight. Just missed it. Now he has to deal with those troublesome two balls down near the bottom left hand corner. And the the combination shot does indeed give him some trouble. So balls on this rack. Jeff made the break shot and Ed made two. Jeff will play position, undoubtedly play position for the two ball here. <coughs> With the stripe acting as a an insurance or insurance ball or safety valve. If he wanted he could play that ball on the side now with position for the two. But he's probably gonna he's gonna shoot the two now. Nice speed that time. Nice speed that time. He didn't try to overpower anything, that's why he had success. <laughs> Still a little bit of work to be done, but the cue ball's in the clear and balls are open and generally be happy with that. Needs to play position for either the four or twelve balls here to open up the one and six. Players would like to leave this ball he's shooting now and place as a key ball. Jeff didn't feel comfortable doing that, so break shot position will have to come up another way. Looks like he may use the three ball as a break shot here to open up the remaining clustered six. Actually, it's the five ball that's going to do most of the damage here. <clears throat> but he hit the shot rather badly send it to the far opposite end of the table. That's what's known as an egregious miss. <laughs> you don't even get the pocket jaws. You really miss the ball badly. It's going to have to begin with the 14. Those three balls in the middle of the table. Might be able to do a withdraw here. And he's 
going to go up the table. In fact, he plays the six now. That'll that'll spread the that'll move the one away from the five. But he still needs a break shot here. And he went up the table with it. So that three ball is going to stay up there longer than most players would like to leave it. In fact, he's probably going to leave it for last. Bump the one ball out for a break shot here. And three ball is your key ball. It's not a particularly good one. Because now he has to control the speed of the cue ball, the ball he strikes, and the secondary ball he strikes in order to be successful with this shot and have a decent shot on the three. Well, he didn't get the one ball out. So no breaks, no real break shot here. He'll cut the one into his left or right and see what kind of angle he winds up with on the three. shot position on the three anyway, but of course, that's not where he would have been had he made the one. Can't tell if Jeff has enough angle to work with here to get his cue ball down table or not. Apparently he does. The one ball is not a very good break shot in any case. It's too far to the right to contact the corner ball with any real force. the cue ball winds up in the rack this shall be almost impossible to reach even if the cue ball is not the cue ball is not in the rack but that's going to be very very difficult for him to reach probably going to require two bridges I think the late Minute Bowl could reach this shot. And he was seven foot seven. <clears throat> Jeff is less. He's not even going to try. He's going to play a safety off the corner ball. You have to be careful not to leave a dead shot when you play this. Because you're moving the opposite corner ball very slightly. He's going to play the shot where you just stick the cue ball there. That's good. You stick on the ball next to the corner ball. That safety is in my book for those. Any of you interested? Advanced pool. It's still out there. <clears throat> you can get it through Amazon. You want to? That safety you just played. You want to hit <clears throat> the corner ball and part of the ball next to it to stick there successfully. It's going to have to come over the top here. This is not going to be easy without fouling. And he just drives it out for an elementary safety. I don't think the nine goes at this time. But the nine is available for another elementary safety, and he can just leave the cue ball stuck on the two and 13. And that's exactly what he did. frozen on those two balls would be even better because then he would create an angle where <clears throat> Ed would be in danger of scratching in either direction but he's got some space to work with. It just thins the stack back down to the bottom rail and dare your opponent to shoot something. He does have a decent shot at the 7 and the 7. Looks like he's not. Another safety into the stack for Jeff Ball. Nicely 
No, gradually, as you'd expect, eventually the player will run out of behind the rack bunts like these because all the balls he would use will have been distributed elsewhere. But at the moment, Ed Latimer has a problem. There's hardly anywhere to go where he doesn't leave an open shot. He looks like he's going to take a deliberate foul. Not a very good one. He may have left the two ball. And if he did, Jeff Moe will be off and winging because half the rack is in the open. It fell in. Once again, credit correct speed. Did not look like he made that ball, but it fell in off the left hand jaw because it was stuck at the correct speed. Now, playing the game correctly, the three and nine should come off early here. <coughs> They're of no use to getting to the next wreck. Might as well get them off and be done with it. Jeff will probably play position for the eight ball here. Nope. Wrong again. He's going to go for the five. The eight ball would have been a good ball to use. It breaks up the three balls in the center and it saves the ten as an insurance ball. But he still has time to get to the cluster balls. I'd like to see the clusters being opened as early in the sequence as possible. going to shoot the ball on the side first and then the ball inside the five or the eight will be a great shot. Ease this ball in very gently. That's all it takes. So the eight ball remains the ball to shoot as a break shot for the reasons stated. You can go right into the 13 and 6 and have the 10 ball for next. Or maybe even the 11 in the side for next. Exactly as called, and now he can use the 10 to move the 11 away from the 4. Thirteen is blocking the corner pocket from the 12, so that's got to come off, and he's got to be careful not to run into the 6. Eleven and four balls remain problems unless he can get the cue ball to the other side. Then he could play them in the uh, lower left-hand corner. He's probably going to play position on the ten, which he didn't deserve, and he's going to use draw to move the eleven a little bit. And then he has the three ball, those those three balls, the five, twelve, and fourteen, as it says. sure why he did that unless he plans to find a place to make the 11 cleanly. <clears throat> he could play the 12 softly and save the 14 to open up the 11-4 and then the 5 would be his break shot. He could play the 14 and go to the other side of those balls as I just suggested. And then either would be playable in the lower left hand corner. Looks like that's what he's going to do. I'd have preferred to see him go one rail to two there. But he's still going. One rail gets you a little closer to the object boss than he is now. A little more controllable angle. He'd like to play this, the 11 and the 4 in the same pocket here. <clears throat> Looks like he's going to play the 12 and then either the 5 or the 4. But again, he's let, now he has three break shots confronting him. And <clears throat> we'll see how it works out for position here. And 
now he has his choice of which break shot to play for two rail position for the other. Not a bad sequence. You'd like to have something a little simpler for your last ball. Just barely made that one and went a little farther than he'd like with the cue ball. Had he made that ball a little more cleanly, the cue ball would be a little farther up the table, but he'd have a little better angle on the four. Four. Once adjusted, looks like it will be 34.19 for Jeff Moll. Thirty-four to nineteen. Jeff with a decent but not great break shot. He needs to draw the cue ball here. Wouldn't look for more than four or five balls to come open. If that many. We get seven balls out. Unless the nine passes the 15 and 13, the only really open ball is the three, but that's enough to continue with. <clears throat> Probably go three, 10, six in that order. Well, the break shot is available here off the 10. It's not a very good one. We've been saying all day, Coming off the rail to break the balls is not a, a particularly attractive option. Too many variables. He's going to try and open the, that stack with these, that shot. And he only got one ball to move out of there. And now, well, he's got a he's got a billiard he could play on the 15-13, but other than that, he really doesn't have much to shoot at at all. wants to take a chance with that billiard I just mentioned. He'll be driving the 15 to the end rail and then into the stack balls for what that's worth. But it's a dangerous low probability shot. He'll most likely choose a safety off the 13 ball. I'd like to have the 13 a little closer to the end rail to try that billiard shot. Like he's going to play the shot I called. Billiard off the 15 into the 13. And just as called, the 15 broke the balls up. Very nicely done. Not sure if the 6 passes the 8 here, but there wouldn't appear to be any other problems on the table. Not much of a problem anyway to take the 8 ball first. Could you use uh, Ryan Shepard as your sidekick for a if he likes, sure. Yeah, do you know Ron Shepard? George, George Fells. Fells. Nice to meet you. Ron Shepard joining us behind the microphone. Jump in here, Ron. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, George. Uh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Uh, I'm one of the local pool players. Uh, I think I'm mostly a, a nine ball player, but I've been playing in uh, one of the straight pool leagues now for the, the last two years. So I. I know Jeff and uh, Ed from the pool league, so I get to play with these guys. Oh, uh, that's the Illinois Billiard Club league? Yeah, the IBC. I'd need my own personal helicopter to hang at the IBC. It just seems like that road out there keeps going and going and going. Yeah. 
And there goes the eight ball as prophesied. Jeff will probably save the six for last before the 11, although we can't be absolutely certain. He's going to go up the left side of the table, take those balls in order after this one. What is the score right now? Uh, we were at 34 to looks like 19 when the rack began. Okay. And Jeff has run nine so far. Looks like he's taking his break shot off here unless he's going for the six, and I can't tell. He's probably going to, it means he's going to save the one. So it'll be a 11, 6, 12, 7, 15, unless I miss my guess. So he took that uh, 11 ball. I thought that might have been a good break shot. For a right handed player, it would be preferable to the one because it's easier yeah. to reach. That was a nice compact stroke that time. You don't have to murder that ball. It weighs what a baseball does. <clears throat> the cue the weighs half what a bat does, and you don't have any farther to move it than 9 or 10 feet. Yeah. So you don't have to be killing these balls. Both these guys have really good technique, really good strokes. So they get a lot of uh, cue ball action with their not much speed. Their play is more methodical than what we've seen in our previous matches. Just going to have to draw back about a foot here to get a decent angle on the seven. That's not quite enough. You probably in, wanted the seven first. In, in order, well, in order and to get the cue ball away from the rail here, you really have to drill the seven, and that means you yeah. ask the pocket jaws for a favor. Got to get the cue ball away from the rail. He just missed that shot badly, thinking about the same thing I was just yeah. describing. Yep. So Ed Latimer has a little simple draw shot here on the seven for a break shot position on the one. If he wanted to, he could play the one and get a side pocket break shot off the seven, but I don't think he will. So Jeff ran 13, and that took him to 46. 46 to 19 as Ed Latimer comes to the table. There's an extra bead on that um, scorekeeper Is there? string up that. there. I'm glad to see him using it. The first match we did here, we had no idea yeah. what the score was until somebody told us. Yeah, the players who play in this room a lot always uh, uh, put a, a couple of extra points at the very beginning in order to compensate for that extra one at the end. Both sides are short a point or just, no, just, just uh, the black side? Yeah, the black side. Okay, well, looks like we've got a score of... Played five racks, there are three throws. Well, this looks like a good angle for Ed, and it's uh, the cue ball is high enough so he doesn't have to stretch. It's a good angle, and the cue ball will contact the corner, the corner ball, the seven, which is always good. Yeah. Got fresh air on one side, that means it's easy to get the cue ball loose. So do you hit this with draw to try and draw the cue ball back to the middle of the table? Yeah, that's a very with, good question. With and what most players believe is if the cue ball is nearer the side rail than the object ball, you use follow, and if the reverse is true, you use draw. Okay. Looks like it is about to break the rule. Oh, he, he, he used follow. Half, he used it halfway, actually. Yeah. He should have had a better break than this, but balls are open and he can continue. If the cue ball object line is parallel to the side rail, most players favor using draw. The draw. We'll play the five here and the three ball will go into those mass balls and open up a few more shots. Nicely played. Looks like he might be jacked up a little bit over the, the 14. He's not going to worry, he... but he's going to play it. Ah, okay. 
I don't see any ready way of breaking up those five balls in the center, but he's got time to figure it out. Six ball lies a little bit too low. Nine seven is a perfectly makeable combination, but that won't help him break the ball. Maybe he can uh, get to the foot rail off the six ball and then shoot the, the four in the other corner. Not the best break shot. He may try to come off the rail here and break the balls. Or he could try drawing into them from here. He's not going to do either nope. one. He didn't do either one. That's probably the best option right there. Is and play position for the eight in the side, and that'll be the break shot. Go to the, make the three, the cue ball goes to the top rail and comes back out again. I'm surprised he did that. There aren't many options available at the 12 because yeah. it's dead straight in. Play the 12 and then the 8, but that only leaves him that combination shot. And that's no way to break the ball. He's going to try and draw this ball back. And he missed it badly. Yeah. I would say that's an uncharacteristic miss for Yes, Ed. it was. A He's a straight in, and he didn't even get the pocket jaw. Yeah. Interested to see how Jeff goes about breaking up the five balls in the center here. And the four ball is not an attractive proposition. It's down lower than the ten. There's barely room to fit your cue ball. In yeah, I was he's wondering. Start with the eight, but I don't know what he's going to do after that. So would these guys be looking at a, a carom shot off that? Uh, was it the twelve ball into the four? Um, if you can't get the cue ball to the four cleanly. Yeah. There might be a carom in there, but it's, again, low probability. Yeah, that's a risky shot. He may be able to finesse this combination so as to leave himself a break angle on the nine. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of stop the nine ball and then pull back a little bit. Well, when you draw the cue ball, the ball you hit goes forward. Yeah. I was thinking he'd be inside the nine there. Yeah, this that's what I thought, this too. This isn't too bad if he can come across and hit the... Looks like the 11 ball near the top of that cluster there. That will open up the balls and keep the cue ball free. He goes into the 12 ball. I guess, or the 15, excuse me. Then the results are less predictable. He didn't do either one. He didn't, yeah. That... Looks like he can barely get the cue ball to the 4 now. So he must have a, a spot at that 4 ball to shoot at. He thinks it's makeable, and it may be, but it doesn't lay real well to break up the rest. Yeah. The most I see him doing here is moving the 13, but we'll see. Well, he did. He clipped the 10 ball. Yeah, clipped the 10 ball. But he didn't get anything open. Still has to shoot the ball up table. And even when he does, he doesn't have a particularly attractive angle to get position on the 11, which is the ball he needs to open those, those the remaining balls up. His, his next shot will undoubtedly be the 15. And he can use this to come across the table and get position on either yeah. the 11 or 13 balls. So he's trying to get just a little bit to the right of the center of the table? Anywhere on the right-hand uh, half of the table would be fine because the 11 and 13 are both available from there. Yeah. And if he can nudge the two without moving the 10, then he'll have a break shot as well. Yeah. Now, yeah, this looks like he's going to have to move all four balls. Because he went a little too far. The cue ball's going to go into the 10, and all of the remaining balls will should yeah. be moved. Worked out just fine. And he's got a break shot. Worked out just it's fine. He yeah. sent the two ball to the rail and back. It's a little bit of luck, but that doesn't hurt. Nothing illegal about it. I don't think he played the shot quite that precisely, but it worked out okay. Yeah, when I play these guys in the league, they, they do get lucky an awful lot. Well, these tables are pretty different from the tables at the IBC. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, John has these tables rolling in a, a really good condition right now. The new yeah, cloth. They, they, these tables play well. 
afternoon, Jeff. We would have liked a little more angle on this ball, either side, so he could do something with the cue ball. It's very close to straight here. And as a result, he doesn't get a real good straight pool angle. He did run the rack, and that brings his score to 61. To Ed Latimer's 15 or 16. Does he play for a break shot here, or uh, so. just pocket the two and play a safety? Pocket the two and more, more call a safety on the two. Jeff has 56, and then has 25. There is a break shot here available, the left hand spin off the side rail, but there are so many variables to the shot that I wouldn't play it. Yeah. Too risky. Well, he went for it. Well, and didn't get rewarded. Yeah. Now that ball he knocked out is too close to being dead to leave it for his opponent. He's probably going to go to the end rail, the bottom rail here and back up into the stack. Yeah. Well, he's certainly going to look at it before he decides how to where to leave that cue ball. Well, you know, if that outside ball is as close to dead as it looks like from here, he's not going to go yeah. down to the table. And if he doesn't think it can be made, he probably will. Yeah. shot like this is to not move any balls because it doesn't take much movement to make an unplayable shot into one you can't miss. Yeah. He may even have done that by moving the 13 over. He may have altered the path of the ball next to the 12. I don't think he did. Latimer will probably play a safety off that, that corner ball sticking out there. And that's what he did, and he sent the ball into the drink. He got lucky that cue ball went behind the line there, so it cannot be played. Jeff has nothing. The only safety Jeff has here is to come in behind the stand. It works out into a foul, no problem, because his opponent has the first foul. Exactly what I said. He's good. Doesn't dare do a safety into the top of the stack because he doesn't want his opponent shooting that 15. Yeah. Take the intentional. Take the intentional would have been a little better if he'd driven two or three balls out. Yeah, a little more aggressive. And, you know, make it more difficult for his opponent to play safe as it is now. He only has to guard against the, the ball way up table at that 15 ball. If Jeff had hit that hard enough to send two or three balls out from the stack for break shots, safety would be a different proposition. Jeff will do something from behind the stack here and lead the cue ball in the bottom row of balls. Was expecting a little more cue ball movement. It's okay too. Again, 
should have left balls out on the right side. This is answerable by sending the cue ball to the bottom rail. Yeah, maybe the three roll a little bit too far. A little back, bit. You'd like back to leave it out where it would be open. Yeah. There's one more reason, you know, one more thing to think about when you're playing defense. Jeff can go off the eight ball and back into the stack if he likes, or he can just go come down here underneath the four. Looks like he's going to try and leave the cue ball right where it is now. And that's risky because the five ball could be made makeable. Is that what he's looking at right now? My choice. Uh, it's hard to reach, but I'd come up here, use the bridge, and skim the five and leave the cue ball on the bottom rail. Dear him to shoot the 10 or 15 balls. And even if he makes them, he doesn't have much. Looks like that's what he's going to do. Balls makeable on the side, but it's no the, bargain. Yeah, left the five out. If he makes it, he gets the four for a break shot. That's the advantage of the shot, and the disadvantage is the pressure shot. He played it up in the corner and missed it by two diamonds. was casual, but at the same time, hasn't left a whole bunch. Jeff could make the 15 and play for the 10 on the side, but it's no bargain. He's over a ball to begin with. It was a very casual safety letterman played there. I assumed he was going for that shot. I, I couldn't I tell. I think so, too, but he missed it so badly between the corner and yeah. side pockets, it's hard to tell what he was doing. I think he was playing it in the corner. This would have been a better shot if he left himself an angle for the side than yeah, you'd have the corner. Maybe a little bit. He can still cut it in the side if he wants. Tricky shot. That's even. Two ball will go to the rail. It will go into the stack. Though. That's go what he's going to do. Yep. He's playing for the breakout here. Nicely done. Very nice. Not too much speed. No, there's still work to be done, but at least with the speed at the speed at which he hit it, he was able to control the two ball. Yeah. Use the seven ball to break up those three clusters balls to the center left. <clears throat> and he only have the twelve or eight balls as the next eight ball, as insurance yep, As a backup. Raspberry seed in his wisdom tooth here is that five ball, which doesn't make any sense. I can't help you in any way. Six balls coming off here. Just barely, too. Mm -hmm. He's, they, these players have wiggled a couple balls in there. Can't tell if the 12 goes by the 8 or not. If it does, he'll probably shoot it to try and open up the 9 and 15. Uh, looks like he's going to shoot the 3. Yeah, he's grabbing the bridge, so he must be going for the 3 ball. 3 ball. So Send the cue ball. Stop for the 1 or roll stop, forward for the 8? Stop for the 12, I would think. He's playing the eight ball. Yeah, he's going for the eight. I wonder how he plans to break these balls. Yeah, I think he had a little bit more angle on that. I, than I it, guess he it did. Looked I, on I was the, looking for him to play position. The monitor. The well, this will give him a good chance to get up for the five if he wants to get rid of it. What he did oh. there was probably even better. He's got okay. a great shot on the nine, and all the problems are solved. Yeah, that, get up for the five right now off the one. Yeah, that opened up everything. Oh, 
So at what point does he start planning out the last uh, few shots for the break shot? As soon as the, you're it? supposed to start doing that as soon as all the other balls are open, wherever in your sequence yeah. that happens to be. So he should be in that mode right now. Yeah, and he's obviously decided to leave the five before the nine. Most players would yeah. strive to take the five off earlier in the rotation simply because it's the wrong half of the table. Nice angle on the 12 here. He can just come off one rail to get good position, yeah. straight in position. So he's trying for a straight in shot on the five. Oh, straight in on the five. Time he used reverse English like he's supposed to. Use a center ball here and a little bit of right to come off that side rail, get back to the, towards the center of the table. That better? Okay. Making audio adjustments as we speak. Nicely played by Jeff Mull. And that's another 14 ball run off a very casual statement by Ed Latimer. Jeff is still adjusting to the racket ritual here. So that will bring Jeff Mall up to, looks like 69 points. And his opponent at 15. Jeff is at, I think there's a little more. 80 to 15 is the score. But uh, 70 to 70 to 15, excuse me. Twenty-five, I think. Uh, no, it's not twenty-five. It's uh, sixty-eight to four to uh, fourteen or fifteen. Good break shot here. Oh, okay. This one you hit and follow, and you expect to spread the balls. You've got to come through the balls with the cue ball. Here. Nope. These players are concentrating too much on things other than pocketing the ball. Break shots like those have three requirements and should only be focused on two. The object ball is take care of yourself if you simply pocket the break shot and get the cue ball in the clear. You will hit the stack. This is the kind of layout that Ed Latimer is frequently productive from. Six ball here came up a little bit short. You can still draw off this ball to get position on the four and then the six if he chooses. You can follow and go to the center of the table. The five eight looks like it might go. No, he's going to shoot the six ball. That's the ball he played position for, and that's the ball he's going to mm -hmm. shoot. He does like these thin cut shots. He's, uh, well, they do have their advantages. You don't have to hit them very hard, and the cue ball saves most of its energy for the stacked balls. Yeah. Probably send the cue ball in between the five and three. Oh, he's not going to. He's going to break them up one more time. Like all the balls are open now. They're open. The nine ball might be a good break shot. Apparently, that's what he's going to say. Uh, he has to deal with the ten and seven, although he can do that now. And what is the key ball before the nine ball? Looks like it's going to be either the twelve or the eight.
10, 12, 8 here. 8 is not a terribly good key ball, but it's negotiable. They'll probably play this 12 as a stop shot, cut the 8 ball in thin. Let the cue ball roll to the rail and back out to the side. Yeah. So he wants to end up with the cue ball about where it is right now. Yeah, or slightly farther up the table for a little better cut angle on the 8. I don't care yeah. for playing the 8 first here. The 12 ball does get you a little better position on the 9, but I wouldn't have done it that way. But that's not neither here nor. This is going to work out well. The slight angle he left himself on the 12 means he can come forward towards center table. Yeah. And an advantageous angle on the 9. Probably have liked maybe one ball with less of an angle, but it won't stop him. A full pace for a badly botched break shot by turning the rack over to his opponent. That will bring Latimer to 29. 68 for his opponent. Once again, a good chance to contact the corner ball for Ed on this break shot. Always want to hit one of the four corner balls because each is free on one side and that makes it easier to get your cue ball loose. Also, you exact the greatest impact on the stack that way. Play this with follow. Wouldn't be surprised if you see him use a little more oomph here than he usually does. A lot of distance now. The European players on a shot like that will draw their cue ball all the way up to the head rail and back again. Back to the middle of the table. Yeah, and they're purists. It, it horrifies purists, but it seems to work. You have to be deadly accurate using that kind of speed. This is the aspect of Ed's game that could be a little stronger is these long shots. You know, the ball thought twice about going. He three rail that one. Yeah. Nice bank shot. Straight in on this ball? Very close to it. And what he should be doing is inspecting the clustered balls from the other side of the table. There he goes. Yeah. <clears throat> this is what you want to do is walk around the table and see. See if the seven ball goes. If the seven or eleven or two ball yeah. or four ball looks like they all go. If he can get the cue ball over there, which he probably can do off the eight. for the one in the side? Or is that the nine? That's the nine. I don't know if it's the nine or the one. I'm not sure what it is he wants next. I guess it's the 14. Doesn't yeah. even look like it goes from here. Or he could play the four. That's what he's going to do. Yeah. The cue ball will go into the 10 and 13 from here. Exactly as called. The bonus ball goes in. Those bonus balls are not particularly helpful. Most players would rather have the ball stand up there to be played position off of. But no harm done. So he has to break out that 11 a little bit. Yeah, and, hits, and he under hit the ball. Problem. Under hit that ball rather badly. I'm not sure he can cut this ball anyway. He's probably going to have to bank. The, yeah, he's going to have to bank this ball and get position on either the 14 or the ball immediately under it. And at that, he doesn't have a very good break shot. He doesn't have any break shots here. May manufacture one here. Nothing but net on that bank shot. Shoot the, well, fairly easy bank. Shoot the 15 and let the cue ball guide the 14 out to the, or that's the 10, to the other side. Yeah. He may have gotten it far enough. It's yeah, awfully that, close. That looks close, yeah. You may want to nudge it out a little farther than that. No, he's not even going to leave it there. Looks like he's going to leave the 12. The 12 in the side? No, in the corner. corner. Okay. So that's a little high, unless he plans to roll it over here. Nope.
So, Raw run of 28 balls for Ed Latimer following that botch break shot by his opponent. That brings his total to 43, I believe. So he's down 25 points. Well, it's better than being down 50. Oh, 53. That's what he has. What, what, he has he 39 was, right now. He has 39, and he, oh, that's right. Okay, so his total goes to 53. He's only a rack in the rear. He was down 40 balls, but that's how quickly this game can turn around. Actually, a lot of equipment from where we're sitting and where the beads are, so it's it's a little Six, 68 to 53 appears to be the score. Yeah, so it's a little hard for us to actually see the score here. That Latimer gets a tie game with the completion of this rack, and he certainly has a good break shot to start with. Because of the thinness of the cut, he won't have to hit it very hard. You all go right into the seven. Cut it badly. Yeah. So the cue ball yeah. missed the stack. Jeff could try and break the balls here, but I think I think he's gonna play this ball on the side and call a safety. Leave the cue ball on the Brunswick. Leave the cue ball. Well, it's not on the Brunswick down there. It's, yeah, it's, it's on the scores, but that's would, the general idea. What would be the Brunswick? I don't think he's going to try and do a one or two rail break shot here. Too risky. And Jeff Mole chooses discretion yep. over Valor. Pocketing the head ball that way discourages the usual safety into the top of the stack. It's not nearly as easy with 15 balls as it is with 14. It's going to go behind the stack here, most likely to take a foul. And that was not particularly well done. Corner ball came out, and the ball came out at the head of the rack. If you're going to do that, get the cue ball to the center of that back row where it can't possibly come back and leave you an open ball like this. How much hay Jeff can make with this ball remains to be seen, but at least he's got a start. It's awful close. Cue ball and object ball are awfully close together for him to use follow here, and follow is what he needs. Sure, what he wanted with that one anyway. Well, he, got, he, he played position for the 14 on the side, which would have been a decent break shot, not a great one. Yeah. Left it for his opponent instead. If there's room to go by. Well, the he's 12. lining it up, so it must be close. Close is what it is, and if he plays that 13 ball first, there are no ready break shots down here for him to come back to. He's considering the value of that 14 right now and what kind of impact it's going to have on the, the still clustered balls. Looks like he's going to take the long, like shot. long shot first. Trying to get the cue ball over on the right hand side of the stack. Yeah. No, he's coming back no, on the left hand side. He's trying side to come back. That, uh, that's bewildering to me. There's an easy safety from here. That one. Yep, that's, that's what he was playing for, I guess. Jeff should find a way to get to the top rail from here because nothing is open down here. If he can get to the top rail without disturbing the balls much, that would be the ideal response. Yeah, Jeff will probably look at that five ball to make sure it's not frozen or something. Yeah. Or the nine ball goes to the bottom left, so he can't leave the cue ball in the right-hand half of the table. 
Looks like he's going to try and skim the four and leave the cue ball long. He left it out from the rack, and it doesn't look like he's going to get to the rail. Nope, that's a foul. Yeah. It's probably close enough to that cushion to make that cut shot uh, difficult. Oh, make the cut shot far more tough than he wants right now. He's almost certainly going to return this foul. Yeah. Maybe even try and pocket hook him down there with the, the pocket jaw on the long rail. Yeah. Didn't quite get there. But nothing can be made from here. Just bet, best bet from here. First of all, he should, try, he should take a second intentional foul. And then he should try and thin the four. Very few of these players are aware enough to take an intentional second foul. We saw it in the Karabatsis match. He's Jeff playing tried the carom. Playing a carom shot. Yep. All he really left was a six in the side. Or the 14-5 combination. That's That was a pretty long shot to take there. I would have looked for something a little more discreet. Secret in playing that carom, incidentally, is you, you want your object ball to come off the bottom two balls in rapid succession. First the ball above the corner ball, then the corner ball. Oh, that okay. gets you the angle going towards the, the pocket. He's going to play the 14-5. Ooh. Just barely made that one. tie game at the conclusion of this particular rack. I expect Latimer to run these balls. sleep anywhere in any position at any time. I never saw anything like a couch, chair, car. It doesn't make any difference. I've seen him sleep in between innings before. Yeah, that's been done too. No further problems for Ed Latimer here. He did his homework good and early in this particular frame, although he benefited from an extremely casual try by his opponent. Pockets are being very cooperative here. Well, he still has a choice of break shots here, it appears. Three, six, eleven, yeah. they're all good ones. We'll use the nine to get on the two and eleven here. That chat is uh, what's known as a pinch. Use right hand spin to send the cue, the object ball to the left. That, that lets you hit it a little bit stiffer than uh, That lets you hit normal. it a little more full. A little more full. Which in turn helps you hold the cue ball slows better. Slows down the cue ball. Well, that shot lacked greatness. It really did. He wanted to leave himself the 11 ball. Now he's gonna have to play position for the seven. Sure, the 11's out of the rack. That that particular shot was played somewhat casually. Yeah. He's going to come around here, try and get an advantageous angle on the 11. <clears throat> he has his choice here, going one rail with left hand spin or two rails with right. He's picking up the bridge. Looks like he's going to go two rails to the right. Odd that he selected the left-hand portion of the bridge for this. But two rails to the right is called, and it looks like he underhit it a little bit. Going to have to go off yeah. the rail. But that's the last three racks to hit that one.
might be 66. It's hard to see from here. Yeah. I think there are two beads after that, after the, yeah, the brown, the brown one. Now. Yeah, I think he's starting at 52. 67, and he started at 51, so I think it's 67, 65 now. No, 67, 66. 66. One more difference. He does not have a particularly good, in fact, he has a lousy break shot here, but he may be able to bring it off. Difficult control because when the cue ball comes off the rail, it has to strike one of the corner balls to do him any good. That's a bit of a now. Looks like bad luck, but that scratch does exist. Has for some time now. I think we'll see Jeff try and play the ball to our left and get position on the 12 if the 12 still goes now that that ball is respotted. Can't tell from here if it does or not. Jeff will have yeah. to look at that. It looks if close. it worked for that ball, the 12 would have been a good break shot. Now yeah. he's going to have to change his strategy. Jeff is looking to the rack for gifts. It doesn't appear as though he was left with any. Caught a bad break in that the seven ball had to be respotted, but at least he's back at the table. tell if the 12 passes the seven or not. But looks like Jeff is going to do something similar to what I described. Ick. Missed the ball by a foot. And Jeff has spent the last three or four innings in the doldrums after getting out to a good lead. Will not be e easy for Ed Latimer to break these balls. For him to do that, and that's exactly why. Well, Up and down the table is a giant risk because it's virtually impossible to control the cue ball. And he's on two fouls now, right? That's right. If, uh, Don't know if Jeff warned him of Jeff that or not. not but he that. may not have to uh, until he gets to the table the next time. And as yeah. you say, Jeff may not remember. But now he can play position from the 9 to the 10 and get, get a break shot. So 9 in the corner? Or 10 9 in the side. corner. No, 9 in the corner, 10 in the other corner. Oh, oh, okay. I was looking at the other ball. That's how I'd play it. Yeah. Not that that means anything. Simple stop shot. And Jeff chooses again to roll the ball. Cost him his angle on the 10. <laughs> I'd have played that as a stop shot myself. He can use this ball to play position on the six if he likes. Yeah, the six would be a good break shot too. That was nicely done. Now he's got the yeah, angle on the a, 10 that he wants. Looks like he's looking at the four though. Now he's got a stop shot. Stop shot, stop on the 10, play the six is what I would opt for. Yeah. The problem with the six is that the two ball is going to absorb a lot of the cue ball's energy on the way that the stack falls. I don't see any other break shot options for him, though, at least not now. I wouldn't want to see him try and use the seven for a break shot. Yeah, the cue ball does seem to get tied up when you come into the back of those stacks like that. It's the baddest part of the stack, so in terms of physics, you've left yourself more work to do. Yeah. So he has kind of a choice here of trying to power through with top spin. If, he shoots, to if he shoots the six, the first ball contact will be the two. It's going to be the two. So the two ball would have to do the break shot work for him. I'm yeah. not sure. I hope he's not going to use this for a break shot. 
that's about what he could have, the best he could have hoped for is he had another ball loose and a ball to shoot with. He can use the four for a break shot here, or he can play position for the three. Not a particularly good break shot, but considering there's only one other ball in the open, might want to think about it. These pockets are producing photo finish shots. Okay, three balls still clustered. Good angle on the 15. draw off that 14 ball on the bottom rail to separate that three ball cluster and the he, six and the one the would six ball six yeah. and one would be his insurance shots maybe if he hits it at the right speed one of those three clustered balls would be a break shot for him next time too a little too hard good I mean he, the balls are open scatter, so. balls are open got a good scatter he can use the eight ball it looks like it's a little low and the two balls a little high, but there are key balls to go with each of them. Well, the one eight, ball eight, eight balls, eight, one ball's kind of low too. The eight balls coming off the table yeah. here. Okay. He'd rather not be right on top of that 15, but he can get around it pretty easily. All right, here goes the one ball. It looks like. I, yeah, I'm more enthusiastic about break shots like the two ball than a lot of players. I believe that distance between your break ball and the stack is not a bad thing. He also has the option of bunting the 13 into break ball position here. That's what he tried to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Left it a little low, but he could still work with it if he wanted to. Problem now is that the 12 ball doesn't get by the three. So yeah, you'd have to play the three and then the 12 to get his break shot position himself an angle on the two ball and he can do that or he could play position for the 12 in the corner if it goes there and then the three in the side for last the 12 goes in the corner and I can't tell from here if it does and this shot should be played with low right he didn't play it that way so he's got another plan A side pocket break, isn't he? He could if he wanted to, or he could come back to the center of the table and play this in the same pocket where he's playing three. Looks like he's going to play for a side pocket, though. Yeah. Right hand spin. Just right. Challenge here is to hit the top two balls instead of the balls immediately behind them. So Jeff regains one of the three racks he lost scoots out ahead by just about that many points. And that will bring him into the low 80s. And his opponent is on two scratches if he chooses to remember that. Actually, if he gets this rack, he only needs four more points to win the match. He's at 81 right now. Is that one or two? I can't really tell. I think it's 81. Yeah, I think it's 81. Yeah. Appears to be the score appears to be 81 to 65. This is a nice break shot, but as I say, it's paramount that he has, he contact the top two balls. That was the favorite break shot of the famous Ralph Greenleaf. Sober or otherwise love to send a ball into the side pocket. I think he hit that second ball pretty solid. The cue ball didn't move very far afterwards. Well, he, 
Cue ball didn't move very far, and look at all the balls that, that splashed out. So that was nicely played. 12, he wants the 12 ball off the, the table early, and that's, that's correct. He should. He can use the 14 as a break shot. It's not my very favorite, but it's there. Looks like he's going to take the 10 first. He can play position for the four if the Come four goes. The four to break out the five and seven? No, just play the four to break out the four balls immediately above oh, it. The, the five other. seven can be made here or there. Okay. Five seven combination goes here and the two balls can be made there. He could do it your way too, but well, that, he, that's what I'd have done. He got pretty straight. Oh. And that's no great advantage. Straight shots are not the advantage you think they are in straight yeah. pool because. You're, unless you go to a rail, your cue ball has to wind up on that same line. Now he can use the seven to break the cluster, so that was well played. Angle. Yeah, a little bit of an angle. The one two will still have to be dealt with, although it's, it exists as a combination shot for sure. You could play the cue ball into the eight here and save the six or in the five. That's what I'd do anyway. Yeah, he could shoot the five he, and the seven and the. 13 if he, he just, and he's two. just going to use oh, the, the 7 angle. ball for the break shot. Yeah, he's got the angle. 7 ball goes into the 3 and 13. Still leaves him with modest problem unless the cue ball clears for the 6. That's what you don't want to do. Yeah. Hope the cue ball can see the 3. It's not enough to gauge that your cue ball will go into the stack. You want to know where in the stack it's going to go in and where after that if you can get a fix on Whether that. Whether the cue ball gets free. Simply determining that it's going to go into the mass balls, you haven't done all your homework yet. That looks good. Ooh, it did. It dropped. It scores. And another bank shot. Again, that's a function of correct pocket speed. Now, the 11 and 8 are hampered by the 6 ball, illustrating the importance of opening up paths to the corner pockets early. You can get position on the 12 to break them, but it's too big a variable with this few balls left on the table, and the 13 ball should definitely come off now. He's not going to like this. He'll probably get the 2 up in the corner, which isn't bad. But that ball up at the top right hand should yeah. have come off earlier in the sequence than this. <laughs> I'm not sure the cue ball can get to the 11 from where he is. He left himself a pretty shallow angle at the 6. We'll see. Well, he'll probably roll toward that 13 on this shot. Got the 11 no. open, which is important. Now, consider the problems that the 13 ball offers yeah. him now, as opposed to had he shot it earlier with all those options coming back the other way. He's going to use the 15 to get to the 13, I suppose. I wouldn't want to see him save the 13 for last. 13 should really come off now. Left hand English and three rail position to the center of the table. Not going to do that, so. A lot of players will play the 13 here, bring the cue ball to the center of the table and put the eight ball in either corner. With two two rail position, you can't get too straight on this. That's pretty good because he can get back to the center of the table using right hand draw. He could use left hand follow if he preferred. Either one rail or three rail position. He stretched out, which is never any good. And that's what he pays for: is he gets a steeper angle on the break shot than he really needs. He only needs five balls to win the match. 
think he falls on the cushion. Yeah, if, had he used the bridge, he probably would have been nearer the center of the table. But these games, when you approach the 90s, the pressure builds and a speed off a rail like that, it can be very difficult to gauge. That's why I didn't want to see him leave that ball for last. Plays it sooner in the rack, he has more options to play next. Mole goes to, yes. I imagine there'll be a natural one before they begin the next match. Oh, sure. If, if, if others if others want to do do a game, that seems only fair. I don't mean to hog the microphone. No, no, hogging is wonderful, actually. It's just that I don't want to... No, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Score is 95 to 60, and I, even though Jeff Mull is within five balls a game, I really can't recommend shooting this break shot. So you would recommend the safety here? Absolutely. If the cue ball were anywhere but frozen on the rail, I might fire at it. I, mean, can, I can't tell. Looks like he's going to shoot it. He's looking at the angle. Yeah, he's lining it up, so he's going for it. He's thinking about it is what he's doing, and the longer he thinks, the harder he makes it, makes it on himself. If you're going to shoot this, you get down and fire it. You study it and agonize. I don't know. The advantage is he doesn't have to hit it very hard, and that's the risk. And only four balls came out, so Latimer has work to do. Didn't have to go for it. I wouldn't have. So Jeff needs five and his opponent needs 40. Gonna have to get inventive with a break shot here. Might, might see the ball is partially open right here, either using the 414 or the eight ball. He's gonna drill this. Now the stack balls are reduced to five. He could go into them now and draw if he wanted to, but he does have other options. particularly want to be straight on the nine ball, but that's where he wound up. You need angles to break balls. Could have used the nine as a break shot had he gone maybe another two ball widths up the table. Well, you could do it with the 10 also. He's too straight in on the 10. Yeah, he didn't do that either. He's going to go 5, 15, 10, 13, I think. Two scratches did not come into play. I don't think Jeff reminded him he was on two scratches, but it wasn't necessary anyway. And once again, a nonchalant at break shots. Three balls in the open. He, Jeff should win the game here. You know, that's right. Instead of taking that difficult break shot, he could have taken an intentional foul there if he wanted to. It wasn't that difficult a shot that he missed. <clears throat> Jeff can make that ball on the side. The cue ball comes straight down the middle of the table, separates the remaining clustered balls, and game is over. But as we've seen, coming down into the stack from on top carries its risks. And this, this shot into the side is not that easy. He may go for the four ball first. Save the, uh, I guess that's the 10 for a break ball. Either the 10 or the 12. It's hard to see with the lights on the balls from here. I think it's the 12. Okay. Good start. Now he's got a slightly less severe side pocket angle. He can't save the 12 as a break shot from here, so he might as well break with this. It's the game right here if he makes this. 
should be anyway. He needs four from here, right? Yeah, but he's going to separate the remaining clustered yeah. balls with this. Look out. Well, I, I seem to be prognosticating these scratches reasonably well. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather not. And now a ball comes back up because he pocketed one. So Ed will begin with either the three or nine, I would think. He's at 72, I believe. 72 is right. He needs two racks to win. Three for six here and then a rack and a half. going to open up with the nine, I'm sure. Nicely yeah. done. Another situation where the bonus ball did not help the him. seven ball had stayed yeah, out. If that, ball, if that ball had hung up, he'd be in way better shape than he yeah. is now. I mean, this is negotiable, but now he's got to get to the other side of the table for the two and six. You can see him shaking his head there. That, that ball like was that second ball was not supposed was not expected to fall. It's like he's straight in on the three ball. So all he it looks like he's straight in, almost straight in on either of those two top balls. This forward or back are the only options he has. Well, he can force the ball over from here to the other side of the two and six, just like that. Whoa! And there's just enough left for Jeff to win. He needs these four balls. Well, there's five on the table, of which he needs four. Or maybe, I guess he needs all five. Well, there's an extra bead. I think he just needs four. Oh, okay. Well, all right, this four shows 95. But there are five on the table, and there's really no excuse for not getting these balls. If I were he, I'd leave this ball for last. And you can do that. Better hope it stops nicely for you. That was very, very... <clears throat> Benign. Could have been a lot worse. Okay. Once again, Jeff hopes for a nice... A nice place to stop. And I think the move here, he doesn't want to play that three. The move here is to play the two with draw, I would think, for the three next and come down for the rail ball last. He looks like he's going to play it with follow for the rail ball next. 50 yard line. Overrun position just a little halfway bit. in between two desirable alternatives. He can make either ball, but neither one leads directly to the other. It's probably best off trying to cut this rail ball in and going up to the top rail and come back towards the middle for the three. It's going to be hard for him to get position for the rail ball here. He's got to draw and hit the shot with more speed than he'd like to. Maybe a little left. That's just the pitfall. Now he's left a break shot. So Jeff needs two. And Ed needs 26. So on this shot, do you try and stop the cue ball in the rack, or do you roll past it? You can't. The, and angle's, the angle's too acute to stop in the rack, I would yeah. think. And what he's looking at now is when the cue ball comes off the bottom rail, Will it be on a tangent to run into the three or get past right. the three? You know, he doesn't have a real good break shot here. It's a break shot. Play it with draw and hope to clip the top two balls, but it's not a great break shot. Jeff flirted with those uncertain landing points for the cue ball one time too many in that last inning. He should have been out. Now he has to sweat this out. And it's going to be a grind out here because Ed Latimer is not going to break out too many balls with this break shot. Can be played with either inside or outside draw. But 
He doesn't have a lot of angle. The cue ball is very close to the stack, and he can't count on driving a lot of balls into the clear. He has 25. He needs 25, and his opponent needs two. Uh, I think he needs one because there's an extra bead. Oh, an extra bead? Well, yeah. in any case, he doesn't miss, as the old timers used to say. Stopped it just right to get that that head ball out near the center of the table for the side next day. He doesn't, his layout following that is not exactly sumptuous, but at least he's still at the table. Appears to be almost straight in on this, and there's nothing down here of any great advantage. He'll probably shoot the four next. Bring the cue ball from the bottom rail into the stack and save these two, these two bottom balls, the 15 and the two. Oh, he's got the 10. Didn't realize the 10 went past the one. That was a risk. He's going to have to make the 13 12 combination. Unless the 8 goes in the side, and I don't, I, mean, I can't tell from here. Yeah, it looks like he has a difficult shot, no matter. The 13 12 is no bargain from where he is. He's too close to the 13. The, it's as though the edge of the 13 interferes with where he needs to get to to make that combination shot. He's looking at the 8 as though it goes. I'm not sure if it does or not. There's a bank shot on the 5. He certainly doesn't want that. I don't see any options here except... Maybe you could freeze the key ball to the 6. I was going to say, if he can get to the 8 cleanly, he could play a safety with it and yeah. do what you just said. Yeah. I think he's probably going to play the 13-12. Which he can't conveniently reach. That's what he's looking at. Cue ball will obviously run into the five here. He re aims, second ball into the first, cue ball into the second. It's still not easy. A little more distance between the cue ball and the 13. <coughs> would make it vastly easier. Mm -hmm. This is played with right hand draw. Missed it by a foot. Well, that should do it. Whether he needs one or two, hardly matters. I think it's one. Thinks there's a bit, an extra bead there's somewhere. Extra bead on oh, they didn't do anything with that. They were bad. It, yeah. it doesn't matter. If he makes one, he'll make two. Yeah. yeah. Count the number sure. of beads between 40 and 45. I know. There's an extra. There's six beads. I know. A lot of times they make an adjustment when they play it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, these players have taken their chances with the pocket jaws. I don't know where he thinks the cue ball is going here. I'd shoot the 13 if it were well, available we, to me. I don't think he needs another ball, but he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't know that. He doesn't that. seem to know. I hope he doesn't go on the side. Look out! Oh, All right, <laughs> that was close. So Jeff Mall gets through a close match, beats a tough opponent, Ned Latimer, leaving himself in good position for the rest of the tournament.